Hello, welcome to Luna Midnight Designs. It's time to revisit the snake protector and give this dude another try. So I'll be using Gil for this sneaky snake, as mentioned in the Forest Witch video. Here is my concept art for him, and in the end, I was able to actually get it pretty close to what I drew. So let's begin this for a second time. Fingers crossed, everybody. To give the snake his tail, I first drill a hole through Gil's legs. Once there is a hole, I twist a length of wire together and then feed it through the hole. I then twist the wire again so it is strong and also just gauge the length I want the tail to be. I then wrap the wire and his legs with paper tape. For this tail, I'll be using this iridescent scaled white fabric. So pretty and shiny. Anyway, I fold the fabric and draw out the shape of the tail tube. Yeah. I then sew along a line and then BAM! Snake skin. But it needs to be plump, so I wrap and glue stuffing along the tail to better fill out the shape of the snake tail. Now in my drawing, I have cuts and scars on the tail, so I took a scrap of fabric and painted on some cuts and see how it looked, and it did look decent enough, so I added the cuts and scars to the tail. I also add scars and cuts to the body. Oh, I also paint the end of the tail with a blue gradient. I then brush the top of the tail with the same shade of blue. While I'm at it, I might as well blush the torso as well. So far, so good. The biggest issue is yet to come. Once the blushing is done, I use two-part epoxy to add small scales here and there to the body. I also added Gil's original fins and painted them with a dark blue and glossed them along with the back spike fin thingy. And I give the same paint gloss treatment to the epoxy scales. And after that set is done, I add even another set of scales. Ooh. To make the belly scales more noticeable, I paint on 3D fabric paint. Don't worry, it flattens a bit when it's dry. Now for the most painful, infuriating, frustrating, and most time-consuming part of this doll. Making the back scales. It took so many scales. It felt like I made a million of them. All different sizes too. I just pinched two part epoxy into the shape I like. Easy to make, but it was still a lot of pinching. And even worse, painting all of the stupid little things and glossing them. And then I just had to glue the little devils onto the tail. The middle row is from bigger scales to small, and then the two outer rows are from medium size to small, and then I added even more rows. Two tiny rows next to the big middle one from small to teeny tiny. Kind of reminds me of an alligator, but it's a snake. Body and tail done. Success. Yeah, the first time I did this, I got as far as the scales and had no idea how to move forward, but I am a genius. I figured it out. So the hair, I made a wig cap and then used salvaged doll hair and made wefts and then glued them onto the wig cap. It was a struggle towards the part and the front of the wig, but I made it listen to me. I wasn't going to let this stupid hair get in my way. Now for Gil's head. It has a few pink stains on them, so I gotta paint over that first. 
Now to cover his head in plastic to make the horns. I first use pins to make the holes and stab his head with some wire. And then I add clay and poof, wow, would you look at that? The horns like made themselves. Isn't that just so weird? For Gil's face, I add more cuts and scars. Man, who hurt this poor snake man thing? I added them with colored pencil first and then paint over them to better match the scars on his body and tail. I then blush his face with lots of blues, his eyes, his lips, forehead, chin, neck, and Gil's weird nose thingy. I then added this design onto his forehead just to bring back the original concept art that I'm redesigning with this snake dude. I know it all kind of just got lost. I then added details to his face. First with colored pencils, I added to his eyes, his brows, his lips, but I needed to add white paint to his brows just to make them more visible. For his eyes, I wanted them to be snake so i painted a gradient with yellow orange and red and added the snake eye slits or whatever they're called in black and done oh wait i add tiny scales to his face paint and gloss them along with the eyes and lips and now he is done finally And here is the final doll, the snake protector. He looks so cool. He looks amazing. I'm just so happy I didn't give up on this guy. I love him. The forest witch is alone in the woods, making her healing potions, and along comes a little snake, wounded. She offers her help and applies herbs and cleans the wound and then binds them. She lets the snake go, thinking it would just slither back home, but it stays looking at her, and then suddenly the snake glows and turns into a man. Well, a half snake man. He offers his hand to her and vows to repay her kindness and to protect her. She looks at his hand and smiles and takes it. And from then on, people told stories of the little witch in the woods and her snake protector. Aw, such a cute story, but um, neither of these two cuties has a name. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, please leave a comment. Thank you all for joining me today. Creating this doll was a bit of a challenge. Follow me on Instagram to see more and to be more a part of my process and to subscribe to catch future videos. Thank you all for the love and support. Have a creative day. See you soon. Bye. Oh, wait a second. Before you all disappear, there is something I need from you. I posted a poll on my community tab here on YouTube to see what you all would like to see for the next doll base. Unique Dolls 1. So I made a new post listing the unique bases I have and what I will turn these bases into and design around basically. So check it out and leave a comment on the post for what you would like to see. Couldn't do another poll because it only allows so many options. 
now have a creative day thank you see you soon bye